thanks for the introduction, Philip. Uh, so, hi everyone, thank you for finding time to come to Rajes, especially in such a chilly weather and like in this weird location. Uh, it's really awesome in life, like people who were there last year know what I'm talking about, right? Anyway, uh, my name is Jan. Uh, I am a developer at uh, News, where I work on the API. We do this thing called PMS, which stands for uh, property management system, of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, the thing is, like throughout my career, like I switched my now I do backend. Previously, I do most I did most like front end, full stack, and all that stuff. But all my uh, roles had one thing in common: I worked with web. And the thing is, I really like web, and not just like a developer as like a development platform, but I like web as a, like on its in its own like it's a, like a cultural artifact, uh, a medium. And in this talk, I want to show you why we should pay more attention to the web in its own right, and particularly, I think, this year. And maybe uh, one word of warning: uh, there is some strong language in this presentation, mostly for some humorous effect. Uh, so just like be warned. Anyway. Um, Let's start with some exercise, right? So raise your hand uh, if you have a social media profile on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, right? Hey. Everyone. Now, raise your hand if you have a personal website. Good. <laughs> Does it uh, uh, I have many domains. <laughs> uh, yes. Do you, is one uh, domain representing like yourself? Is it something like you could it's not even running, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't count. But it's a good start, anyway. I'm planning to. Yeah. So, my hope is that, like, for those of you who didn't raise the hand, which is still the majority, uh, like, I hope that like, my talk will somehow maybe convince you, or maybe, like, you will just consider it. Anyway, um, over the last year, there were like some articles and thought pieces in some major publications about how internet isn't fun anymore, how social media is dying. Look, I mean, right, like this is happening like every year. Like, in fact, like that one, uh, the modern internet sucks, bring back geocities is actually from 2015. Uh, but there actually seems to be some shift in power dynamics on the web where it seems like the major platforms are losing steam and also well part of it is definite, definitely some generational change there is it's clear that generation z uh, Z zoomers uh, they use web differently than like previous generations especially millennials right so really I don't want this talk to be uh, like, these young ones with their TikToks have no idea what the real web is about. But in my day, we, uh, when we wanted to surf the web, we had to walk 10 miles to the beach. Well, okay, so not like that. Um, but I want to focus on established platforms, uh, which became synonymous sort of with social media and the web itself. So a few things happened in 2022, and we saw those things to fully play out last year. Let's start with Google. Um, for the past few years, it became quite a meme how Google uh, is now full of ads, and you really have to look for some relevant actual results. Like it's sort of like the opposite of what Google uh, was in the beginning, what tried to be, right? Um, and I like particularly this, uh, this illustration like, uh, where if you look for like hearing aids, like you have this, all this stuff, like it is all adds these extra widgets. Like we really came like a long way from these 10 Google links and Google also wants to push on us like the additional features like maps, shopping and so on. In fact, we now have some empiric measurement that like Google is getting worse. This is like a recent paper from um, uh, German researchers where they uh, look at like product reviews and the results on Google and they found out that like it's really terrible. Like you get like these spammy 
uh, over optimized <coughs> results. And like the only silver, silver lining is that like the competitors, uh, Google competitors are doing far worse. And now let's add this guy to the mix. Uh, for those who don't know him, that's uh, Sam Altman from uh, the CEO of OpenAI. Um, so OpenAI released GPT like a few years ago, but uh, ChatGPT uh, was released in 2022. And like to this day, we are still like struggling to realize like what of, like what this thing is all of capable of. Uh, and well, the consequences of these generative uh, language models are really interesting for Google search. So the thing about large language models is that these uh, models are mostly trained on the data scraped from web, right? So text from the web, targeting websites and all that stuff. So they are really good at generating like plausibly looking web articles. And what happens if you then give this toy to some crowd hacker uh, who decides, okay, like, like let's build, make, make some content. Uh, they, so this is thread from a guy who, well, obviously he's trying to sell his product, which is about generating uh, articles for the website. But he, he talks about this uh, CEO heist where he took like the competitor's sitemap uh, fed it into GPT API and generated like basically like mimicked the structure of the competitors web uh, and to, to hijack their like positions on like their keywords. Uh, well, okay, so you got like these AI generated articles which look relevant, look plausible at the first sight, then you find that's like a total crap, but. What does Google does about it? Well, they really struggling with it. Like the results speak for themselves. Uh, yeah. So really, AI and Google, I think, is becoming worse, and we will see it becoming much worse. And this was the fifthly generated by. Oh, <laughs> that's also the thing that like even like these these uh, publications are now looking for for AI to uh, generate their articles. So really, like. It's web full of crap. Let's talk about this guy. Uh, <laughs> like I didn't pick this uh, photo by by just randomly. Just like uh, pay attention to this x.com, right? Uh, so let's talk about Twitter. <laughs> uh, so Musk uh, reluctantly bought uh, Twitter in 2022 also, and, and he really tried to get out of this purchase. Uh, and I don't want to talk like, about like all his misdeeds and like how he turned uh, uh, Twitter into this uh, junkyard full of misinformation, where actually uh, most of the disinformation and conspiracy theories is spread by these so-called verified accounts, uh, and well, of course, by Musk himself. Uh, <laughs> but let's look at some numbers. So this is um, these are some third-party data about daily active users on Twitter. And what you can see here, this is like the purchase of Twitter, and this is Twitter rebranding. And like in September 2023, where these data end, like we are about like on the same, like about at the end of 2021. So really, like there doesn't seem to be such a huge drop off of users, like how many journalists predicted, like, you know, like Musk will burn Twitter to the ground in just like in less than one year and so on. Uh, personally, I find it quite shocking, like Twitter is like it's this junk, but like the thing is like for majority reasons, you may, even for you maybe you didn't notice the change besides changing the logo and maybe the fact that Twitter is now much slower and it pushes you all these like paid subscriptions and maybe some shitty ads. Uh, but what's I, like, I personally uh, decided that I don't want to take part in uh, Musk's uh, midlife crisis toy, uh, <laughs> so I sort of like left the Twitter um, and, and uh, locked up my account. But uh, the more interesting thing is what advertisers do. Um, so really, while well, the drop of you, the leaving of users wasn't so huge, uh, 
the revenue from advertising fell to about like half of what it was in 2022. So from five billion dollars to two and a half billion dollars. And uh, that's what I believe uh, what will happen like throughout the following year is that we will see uh, Twitter or sorry X uh, to do much more desperate moves in order to like extract more money more money from the remaining advertisers and remaining users. Uh, and well, there is one underlying theme to this all. So let me ask you another question. Do you know this word? Like raise your hand. One, two people, right. You should, it was the word of the year 2023. <laughs> so what is initiativeification? Uh, Initiativeication was coined by this really prolific writer, Cory Doctorow, who uh, writes about uh, platform cap capitalism, copyright law, like these various uh, misdeeds of modern technology and modern capitalism. And he coined, it, um, he coined uh, initiativeication a few years ago, 2022 actually, but it really got popular over the last year as um, <coughs> We saw the crisis roll out, uh, tech companies laying off their uh, employees and looking for some additional sources of revenue. And he describes uh, initiativeification as like this three-step cycle. So how platforms uh, die? First, they are good to their users. So they, um, they invite you in, they offer you, say, bribes, even for some, some like, uh, like uh, really cheap prices. Think about Uber, for example. Then they uh, turn to the business customers. Uh, we can think of, for example, advertisers. Um, and they try to make things better for them. And finally, when they have like both users and business customers locked in, uh, they uh, try to they extract like all the surplus value for themselves, typically for shareholders. shareholders. And we see this playing out with Amazon, with TikTok, Reddit, last year particularly, uh, with Uber and Airbnb, of course, because those are sort of known for hiking their prices uh, once they sort of get some foothold in some city. Um, but I think the original or maybe the prime example is Facebook. And this was described uh, by Matthew Inman, aka The Oatmeal, even even before before uh, correct doctoral, so maybe you know this one. Like how is it how is it to reach people on the internet? Uh, first, you start with some website. You have some neat stuff there. You invite people to look it. Then, I mean that happened like maybe like 15 years ago, right? Facebook was new. It was hip. Like everyone was there, uh, and it has these convenient features for like publishing content, spreading it to say your followers if you created some content. So everyone started to follow it, follow you there. And once uh, they gained like enough users, well, they decided like, yeah, okay, uh, dear content, content creators, now if you want to reach your audience, you have to pay us. So you can treat it probably already here, it is says, uh, promotion, boost this post for $10,000 and reach a fraction of your followers. And that's pretty much what Facebook is nowadays, right? Uh, pay, to, pay to share your content. And really, like, I find it funny that like, people look for like, the alternative to Twitter and they find threads, which, which is also by Facebook, well, meta actually, but doesn't matter. And, uh, they, because like it totally won't play the same, it won't be the same thing this time, right? It will play out differently, right? Right? So can we break this initiativeification cycle? Uh, or we are so, supposed to like walk every time into this trap and become some hostage in some initiativeification scheme for yet another time? on some other platform which tries to extract value, value for the shareholders. Well, here's a modest proposal. How about, uh, instead of like say, adopting yet another social media platform, what if 
we built the website. And the thing is, I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but it feels almost like, like the majority of the web disappears. Like if you were on the web like those 50 or 20 years ago, uh, you know that like we were like finding some random stuff and nowadays we mostly scroll through these feeds and uh, on these platforms which really try to like keep us in and it feels like the websites uh, are just, just disappearing. Well, the thing isn't that they disappear. The thing is that we just became lazy. We don't know where to look for them. So where have all the websites gone? Um, for that, I like this uh, description uh, from, well, now defunct uh, community yesterday, where who sort of identified like that you have the core web, which is like these typical uh, platforms, uh, mainstream web, you could also call it Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, uh, stuff like that. And on the outskirts, you have this peripheral web, which are like these loose communities. So pockets of uh, of like wild creation, sort of what web used to be, and these uh, communities are actually thriving. Uh, they describe it as the digital countryside uh, of the corporate megapolis around that core web. So I asked uh, Dali to sort of visualize this. Uh, yeah, it's AI generated, but I kind of like it. Uh, the thing is peripheral web isn't probably such a popular term. You can find this concept under different names like indie web, small web, web zero. Uh, there is also slow web, which, for, which is sort of like uh, slow food. Like instead of like what you are eating, it's about the consumption of your of information, like your information diet. And there is also small internet because there are even uh, people who say, yeah, you know, like web is fundamentally corrupt, like let's stop using any web technologies and let's adopt uh, new protocols which are like much simpler, uh, less commercial, so they use things like Gopher or Gemini, but that's for another time. Anyway, uh, what these, uh, say, movements or, con or concepts have in common is that they are trying to be human scale, it's mostly by humans, for humans. Uh, they try to be sustainable. It's usually like crowdfunded. There isn't like any venture capital uh, funding, like <coughs> rapid growth or stuff like that. And they, and thanks to that, they can also avoid this corporate greed and this maximization of profit and uh, so on. So uh, if this sounds interesting, and I hope it does, Let's see where we can start, where we can find some way into this, into this small web. Well, let's start with discovery. Um, there are now some alternative search engines uh, which can mm, help you discover these wonderful small web websites. Um, and I'm not talking about alternatives like uh, DuckDuckGo or Bing. Like, I mean really, really alternative search engines like, for example, Stract. Uh, which is this open source search engine uh, which provides this functionality with so-called optics so you can define your own counters uh, and uh, for example search only through uh, the blocks or uh, there is Vibit which is this Ripro search engine and this, it has this like uh, great feature called surprise me so if you click it it will take you to this random website which uh, is sometimes those are like really weird topics. Sometimes, uh, usually the design is terrible, but I really like it. Re I recommend it. Um, and if you remember, maybe uh, back in zero years, two thousand five ish, we used to have these uh, blog aggregators, uh, sites like Technorati, or in, here in Czech Republic we had Weblogy, says it. Uh, and which try to sort of like follow like the pulse of like what, what the blogosphere is uh, talking about. And well, sites like these make comebacks. So this is Feedle World, which actually where you can submit your blog, you can search through blog posts, you can see like what are the popular posts. Um, and yeah, it's, it's actually becoming more and more active. 
And of course, another thing for discovery, this is like even more retro stuff. This was popular in the 90s, or so I have been told. I was in kindergarten. Uh, so we had these web rings uh, where you join the, your site can join the web ring and uh, you can like click, uh, you put like say banner or some links on your website and you can go to the next site in the web ring or the previous site in the web ring or the random uh, site on the web ring. And there are wonderful web rings still like for, again, uh, well there are these retro web rings and the old net web ring which let you also generate these nice <coughs> banners uh, that are made for your website. But there are even like more serious web rings, like this accessibility uh, web ring club, uh, where you can, where, which is about sites or, or blog, <coughs> blogs, for example, which focus on uh, web accessibility. Um, you have directories, so if you remember, uh, Seznam says it still sort of acts like a web directory, but even Google used to have a directory. Yahoo uh, started as a, as a web directory. And again, like some of them make comebacks. So this is for example, ooh, directory. Uh, <laughs> it's a directory of blogs. These are categorized in the, this hierarchy of topics. And uh, you can like, if you look for some, like, some weird obscure topics, maybe you can find them here. We have communities which um, are super active on these, uh, on these outskirts of the web. So, NeoCities, do you remember GeoCities? Right. So, NeoCities is like a modern take on, Neo, uh, on GeoCities. Uh, so it's a static web hosting. You can put like HTML and CSS, maybe some client-side JavaScript there, and maybe that's it. But uh, people are really active there, and it has this like, well, it's part nostalgia, but part also like a community trying to make this their own thing. Uh, so to just give you like an example, uh, you can, uh, here you can create your own pet, and like a widget, and you can put it on your, on your site. Or uh, people actually put even some serious stuff there, like this is like the watch list for the Star Wars, the Clone Wars. So uh, yeah, like it's a good, good place where you, if you want to start some like really, really uh, weird, obscure, or maybe just like, or even like super serious project, um, it's very interesting community. Uh, for, I mean, we are on Project.js, so uh, I believe there are even some JavaScript developers among you. So maybe you know Glitch, uh, which uh, is this uh, like sandbox uh, hosting site where you can put up like whole uh, Node.js applications. And uh, Glitch is particularly in interesting compared to its uh, competitors, like how they emphasize this community aspect. So you can build these playlists, uh, they have these code gems where they every month they invite you to build some uh, project uh, for, for, for their topic. And there are some really interesting things, like for example, Stefan, um, uh, Stefan Bohoshek, I think is how he's called, like his name. He uh, he's very popular in uh, the indie web community for b building these uh, social media bots. This used to be Twitter, nowadays it's mostly Mastodon. Uh, and he has this showcase of uh, the bots he has built, and these are all hosted on Glitch. So it works on Glitch, it's uh, pre pretty useful for these like more advanced projects. Um, and another example of community, yeah, do you remember MySpace? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there is this guy who was in kindergarten when like MySpace was popular. So he didn't really have like a pro profile there. He only learned about this like in retrospect and he decided, hey, this sounds neat. So let's build something new like, like that. So Space is, is like really this retro social media site. Uh, directly mimicking uh, MySpace, including the possibility to design your own profile. So yeah, you can, there, there's great stuff. Uh, no, I, I mean like serious, like people, people are creative there. I mean, even with MySpace, uh, it was the case that like many uh, professional coders started their 
uh, started their careers on MySpace. And I think like we shouldn't uh, like laugh at this. I mean, I think it's great that like places like like these exist. So, and of course, like the biggest community of them all is this abstract thing called Fediverse. Um, so Fediverse is, uh, well, I mean, you probably heard about Mastodon, right? It's like this alternative to Twitter. Uh, like the journalists see, okay, this is like some open source alternative uh, thing which attracts only like Linux users and other, other weird uh, people. Uh, but it's sort of like missing the you know, forest for, for, for one tree. Uh, the interesting thing about Mastodon is that it isn't like a site on its own or like one, one application. Uh, it, it runs on this uh, protocol called ActivityPub. And this protocol uh, has made various uses. So Fediverse is this loose term um, talking about these federated web application services where uh, these, all, all of these services can talk to each other. So uh, say you decide to have like Microblog account. You can pick Mastodon or you can pick, for example, Miski or Pleroma. And yeah, whatever you pick, like other users, say for example, or other service can also read your, your posts. Uh, but there are even more use cases. We have PeerTube, which is like this open source alternative to YouTube. Um, and you can do stuff like follow PeerTube account from Mastodon, uh, or we have also uh, Lemmy, for example, which is like this alternative to Reddit. Uh, some call it like uh, together with Kbin, they, they call it Threadiverse, like <laughs> universe of threads. And we also have like even these macro blocks, if you will. So you can see even WordPress here and Drupal, these established content management systems, can federate into the Fediverse through ActivityPub with uh, plugins. And yeah, we have even like Goodreads alternative that's Bookworm. Nextcloud uh, supports uh, like social features uh, through ActivityPub. And there's also PixelFed, I think it's like very active projects which tries to mimic uh, like Instagram, but again, like open source, federated. And it's pretty interesting, even maybe you have heard that Threads, uh, which I mentioned earlier by Meta, is considering to federate in uh, through ActivityPub into, into the Fediverse. And people are sort of like torn about it, like, yeah, it's cool, they recognize it, but on the other hand, it's Facebook, so like, yeah, we don't want that. Anyway, uh, here are a few ideas, uh, like, if you want to join, if you want to sort of take part in this wild, small web, uh, you can start just by <coughs> reading stuff. Maybe you can curate some stuff. Or maybe you can even like create some actual stuff. <coughs> I think like the best thing you can do is to click around and find out. I mean, where was the last time when you Googled something you, and you found some, maybe someone's blog, you decide to, to okay, this is interesting. Let's learn more about the author. Uh, let's. Uh, see around what they, what they have more. Uh, yes, yeah, you usually drop in, pick up the information, go back. So really, click around, find out. Uh, do you still use RSS feeds? Or maybe, yeah, uh, another <laughs> question. Do you know what RSS feed is? Raise your hand. Yeah, and leave your hand up like who uses still some RSS uh, reader. Well, yeah. Sort of what I expected. This technology is still around. And actually, like, if you listen to podcasts, you still use RSS feeds. Uh, yeah, let's quickly go through the, through the rest of it. Here I think, uh, it doesn't have to be so complicated. Like, for example, you can pick up your favorite websites or resources or whatever and put up GitHub list. So this is my project. Uh, I decided to collect like a uh, list on GitHub, uh, Codeberg, and GitLab, and wherever else. Yeah, uh, like it's not like the most popular with just like 9,000 starts, but uh, it's the oldest one, I can say, <laughs> or for what I know. Uh, so uh, 
Really, it's just like one readme, a readme file in Git repository. Uh, there are even these um, curating, curation communities like Arena, uh, where you can, again, collect like websites, images, <laughs> whatever, like even some like wonderful obscure topics like fruit crate uh, labels. And finally, if you decide to create some stuff, uh, again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, sure, make a home page, make a single serving site. Or if you are adventurous, you can start a blog. Or maybe resume writing to your blog. I'm pretty sure that some of you have some dormant blog somewhere out there. Your home page can be like super complicated, or it can be just like one, one HTML file like mine here. Uh, you can build these single purpose sites. So this is, is it Friday yet? No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that one is also great. There was also like Zeman Countdown. Uh, I have more, a few more examples, like make everything OK button. Try that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm <pretty> sure <laughs> even even on checks on this one, I'm sure. <laughs> so this is like the sound bars like the ears are, are super, super nice. Uh, and this one is from me. Uh, this one is actually it will be actually the domain will be expiring in a few days, but I wanted to make sort of like fun but also be helpful about the situation about Twitter API, do you don't know. Musk decided to monetize the whole thing, asked for like $100 per month if you want any like basic access. Um, so yeah, I made a single purpose uh, site called Is Twitter API Free? And it came like, it was full package. There was like RSS feed and uh, Mastodon and Twitter bot. So I really over engineered this, this thing. <laughs> uh, finally, if you fancy a blog, uh, so what helped me like how to think about a blog isn't like, you know, this, is, this isn't like a serious publication. It can be just like a brain dump. Like today I learned something, something which could be potentially useful for anyone else, or maybe for me in like a few years, just like if I want to review some topic. And besides like these established platforms like WordPress, there are now even like these uh, like minor platforms like WriteS, which actually is activity but compatible and also microblog, but also these like uh, really minimalistic platforms like their blog. And if you decide to blog, uh, Jason Kotke, which is like one of the, like, I would say, most professional <laughs> bloggers on the web, uh, has a message for you. And it's from 2014, actually. Uh, so blogs really like didn't came out, didn't come out of fashion. They, they are still still there and they're, they, are, they will be, they will probably sur survive Twitter. Finally, uh, I want to end with this quote uh, by Tim Berners-Lee. Um, really, like the web is more creative medium than we sometimes tend to think, and then these social media platforms led us to think about. So really, let's use the web to create new, new exciting things. And yeah, if you want to give it a try, click around, calm down, curate some stuff, create some stuff, maybe start with your homepage. Um, and by the way, if you are interested in this topic, particularly in activity pub, I want to invite you to Web Expo, where I will be, uh, I have like more developer oriented talk about activity pub, how it works. And finally, and oh, also there's with discount code is my last name, so you will get 20% off, which is now currently about like 1500 crowns or so, so Pretty neat. Um, so these uh, are two links. If you want to get in, uh, get in touch with me, this is my homepage. You can find my email there, uh, my Fediverse account, and here uh, most of the links I showed you here you will find on this website. Uh, this is my book actually. So uh, yeah, click around and find out. Thank you for your attention. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, what do you think about the uh, uh, Patreon changes last year? Because they are 
basically uh, saying the same thing that uh, social media has broken and they empower uh, the creators of this uh, platform. Uh, who is the source again? Uh, Patreon. Pat Peter pa Patreon. Patreon. I, I don't know. Patreon. Uh, Patreon. Uh, to be honest, I'm not aware of their, their stance, but uh, yeah, like this, this is actually coming They, they from basically say the same message as you, that uh, they uh, want to uh, give uh, power back to the creators yeah. and not... Uh, so, I think, I, I think like Patreon and like these crowdfunding sites are really interesting because they play maybe more important role in, this, in these movements they, than they should. And there is, of course, this risk of entitification. But uh, I, to be honest, I'm not aware, or I don't know what their stance. I will look it up. Thank you for suggestion. Uh, but yeah, like this, this idea isn't coming like fully from me. Uh, I actually made this talk after I read like a few articles and like really felt this, uh, felt this uh, change, or or like some people pronounce it. You know, like 2024 will be like the um, the, the year when that will make a huge comeback. I think like it's obviously like overblown but I think like really like a lot of people who took uh, Twitter and these platforms as sort of given realized now hey maybe like it's not so so, so stable maybe like if like one one person can like completely change it and start like uh, welcoming Nazi to that platform maybe I'm not so comfortable with that so yeah I think I think like uh, you can definitely find like many voices saying the same thing. And the last thing, thank you for the quick uh, walk through, through the IT design. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, do you consider <coughs> communities like channels or discords as the outskirt or, or as the other yeah. stream? So in that quote, uh, I mentioned, uh, they, they specifically mentioned discord. And uh, one thing what these communities have in common is that they are not trying to be like this global village like Facebook and Twitter promised. They are really trying to be these tightly knit groups. Um, so in a way, in this way, like definitely, I think it's fine and like various <coughs> communities, even like which are, I would say like non-commercial or even like anti-commercial uh, have their Discord, uh, Discord communities, but Again, like with Discord and Slack, these are like uh, really like commercial platforms, and particularly with Discord, there is always this risk that they will try to extract value from uh, their users. So uh, people who are more like privacy aware and like more like distasteful about uh, they they don't like like the, the, these commercial platforms. They prefer things like IRC, which is the local life. And or, or there is even like Matrix, uh, which is like this um, open source, also federated protocol for chatting. Uh, and well, actually, like even Jabber, if you remember that thing, XMPP, uh, there are even communities who organize around that. So uh, yeah, it really depends on like how much you like or dislike these platforms for their convenience versus the more like commercial aspects. Maybe one more question to that, sorry. Uh, does anyone else still remember their ICQ number? Oh, yes. How about CSS and Garden? No. Yeah. Uh, okay, can I? Um, sir? Sir? So, um, well, you remember Yahoo groups, obviously. So what would you come closest to that? Uh, like email mailing lists? Yeah, something where. Well, I mean, I'm thinking. The thing is, like, people, they don't use, like, emails so much. I mean, there are still Google groups, but it's Google, right? They will probably kill it uh, eventually. Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I also wait for some of them. Linux still use them. Sorry? I think that Linux still use them for internal computer. Most of the projects still use mailing lists. Mailing lists, yeah, they have like their own hosted. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Like open source communities, but they have their like own self-hosted uh, uh, lists or some uh, mailing lists which come with uh, like say code forges. Uh, so so they are, for example, designed to handle like patches to the software. But I think like for for like a popular usage, 
uh, I don't remember or don't know about any any like new product which tries to sort of replace uh, young groups. Maybe maybe you will find some. There are maybe I could show. If you uh, are looking for open source uh, software for mailing list, it's Mailman Three or uh, Simba. But yes, yeah. cost it. I don't know. The problem with like most of this software is that you have to uh, sort of manage it. So, da -da -da. duplicate. Yes, here we go. So, like whenever I look for some alternative, uh, this is my favorite website, and uh, alternative2.net. And let's see. I think I run into like a few alternatives to Yahoo Groups, uh, which were paid. Uh, in a way, Basecamp can be used it if you have like a close community, uh, but I think they don't have like a free free tier. And I think yeah, Google Groups, Mailman for example, is like this open source project, and maybe Groups IO. Uh, I think the problem <coughs> with these mailing groups is that uh, many of those groups move to these either like into like WhatsApp uh, or these like private chats or um, into into stuff like uh, Facebook groups. So that's a, like a really good point. Uh, maybe there are like, like even like more mm, like minor projects uh, which which provide something some function something like that. Uh, I think actually uh, Outlook, uh, if you have like a paid account, have something like like mailing lists. Uh, yeah, if you have any recommendations, like feel free to share. <laughs> yeah, but I can only I, I stop to recommend you have to organize the hosting yourself. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Hosting mailing lists, uh, mailing mail server on your own is very complicated. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the thing. Like this, this, this is like mostly stuff from nineties, right? So. It didn't didn't like advance uh, so much. The last question here. Okay, you said let's move from social media to no. own own blog post. I'm uh, saying um, okay, maybe maybe there, there there should be like more nuance to what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not saying like you should like drop your social media. I mean obviously it depends like where you want to spend uh, your time, your valuable time. And the reason why we think like the web isn't out there is because like we spend more time which we spend surfing the web on these social media feeds, right? Uh, but the thing is like you should, I think it's more about like valuing your time and valuing your stuff. If you decide to post something on social media, uh, instead of like say posting uh, your an article on LinkedIn, maybe post it first on your blog and then repost it to LinkedIn, uh, point to your blog, uh, there is this uh, thing called like public uh, from from indie web community. They call it like publish once, syndicate everywhere everywhere else. In the sense that like if you post something on your blog, you can syndicate it on these uh, close platforms like Medium, LinkedIn, Dev to Even, and on some of these platforms you can say, oh, hey, this is like a canonical source for this article. Um, so you can still reach that community. You don't get penalized from uh, like uh, search engines if this is something which concerns you, and um, you 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 still have this this reach, but you also keep your own stuff under your control. So that's one possibility how okay. you can approach this. Got it. Thank you. Okay, right. let's have a break. Uh, let's make it short. Like hey. this. <laughs> some refreshments here you can have some drinks in the beer fridge uh, just please uh, make uh, a, a mark that uh, you took some beer so uh, the lady can calculate it uh, that, that's it and uh, let's continue after the drink <laughs>